A timepiece from German watchmaker A. Langenzerner is always an experience. From the stark gothic designs to the unusual layouts and even the intricate complications, there's not a watch that emerges from the brand's Glasseter home that doesn't raise an eyebrow. For the Langer 1 Torbjörn Handwerkskunst, however, it's more like five eyebrows. Here are five strange things about this unusual watch. Looking to buy, sell or exchange a premium watch? Visit WatchFinder, the pre-owned watch specialist. If you enjoy these videos and you'd like to see more, please help us by subscribing. It may not seem like much, but it really does mean a huge amount to us and me. Thank you. If you want to show the time on a traditional watch, you're going to want to use hands, and the Langer 1 Torbjörn has those, no surprises there. There's one for the hours, one for the minutes, one over on the right for the power reserve, the 72 hours of which indicated with a very Germanic up and down, and of course, one for the seconds. The arrangement of said hands is unusual in the Langer 1 layout, but not indecipherable once it becomes clear that the time, usually the largest display, resides over in the MIDI subdial over on the left. So far so good, until it comes to actually reading the time. Hours and minutes for a casual glance and everything's rosy. Take a look at the seconds however and you'll spot that something's up. Now. On a watch like this, where the seconds appear on a smaller subdial off center to the main display, there's no real need for accurate time telling. This is no military chronometer. The seconds really exist just to tell you that the watch is running. Which is good, because if you want an accurate readout between 18 and 42 seconds, what you get instead is a reminder of the watch's provenance. Made in Germany graces the lion's share of the lower half of the second subdial, but really it's a minor discrepancy that can just be ignored to no real detriment. Except this is our Langenzona, seemingly very pleased with the location of this wording, instead of moving it to a different spot on the carefully considered dial. Instead the second hand gets a second tip. Pointing in the opposite direction, it can be used to determine the exact reading as it passes through its maker's country. Right, so we've established that the hands are a bit unusual, but what about the dial itself? Let's see how deep the rabbit hole goes. How about this then? The dial is made from white gold. White gold, you say, but it's clearly black. Well, yes, thank you. And that's because our Langenzona covered it in black enamel, a painstakingly delicate process involving blue paint that's made with ground up glass and a very hot oven that turns it all black and shiny. That's why this watch earns the title Handwerkskunst, which, without even speaking German, gets the point across. But why? Why the white gold if it's just going to be covered in black enamel? A number of reasons, many of them practical. Unlike traditional copper-based materials, white gold does not expand during the firing process, which would lead to the enamel cracking. It's also far more corrosion resistant, further improving the dial as a foundation for the enamel to sit on. It's not all about logic, however. Alangenzona wanted the dial markings to shine through the enamel rather than be printed on top, and white gold has a certain luster to it that makes it the ideal material. The hands and dates around are too white gold, and so by leaving the raw dial material untouched for the markings, the Langer 1 Torbjörn Handwerkskunst gleams like nothing else. And how about this for attention to detail? The thickness of the enamel itself was even accommodated for in the pinion height of the hands. But wait! We're not finished with that pesky second hand just yet, because it's got another trick up its sleeve. As we've seen, white gold is a prominent fixture of the Langer 1 Torbjörn Handwerkskunst, but not for the second subdial. That is, instead, made from silver. We've seen silver used recently in the Tudor Black Bay 58925, and the reason that's notable is because silver is rarely used in watchmaking at all, not since pocket watches fell out of fashion at least. 
Ah, you might be thinking, but what about German silver? The material is a favourite of Erlangenzona for the champagne tinge it gives the movement, but alas, it's not actually silver, rather an alloy of copper, zinc and nickel, favoured for its hardness and corrosion resistance. Things very welcome in a movement, and the complete opposite of silver. So why the silver second subdial? And won't it corrode? Alangenzona wanted the subdial to shimmer with fine concentric circles, almost like a medallion honouring the brand's homeland, and it's just not possible to achieve that with enamelling. Many other watchmakers would just give up on that fine detail, but not this one. Instead, the subdial is a separate piece, carved from the material that gave the best result. Silver. And being anodized in black to match the rest of the dial, it will remain bright and gleaming for many decades to come. As wonderful as the dial is with its very Germanic level of attention to detail, of course the tourbillon takes center stage. Nestled towards the bottom of the 38.5mm platinum case, the tourbillon is the epicenter of the caliber L961.3 and quite the visual treat it is. A Langenzona has been known, as is in keeping with tradition, to hide the tourbillon around the back, but not here. The caliber L961.3 as a whole is obviously an incredible thing to look at, whichever way up the watch is. And from the back, the extent of the hand engraving that further bolsters this watch's Handwerkskunst moniker can be seen. Despite the additional big date, power reserve and tourbillon complications, the watch overall remains at a slender 9.8mm thick. It is such a triumphant thing to behold, thanks to the incredibly ornate artistry, that there's a surprise detail that might go amiss. The jewel bearings for the tourbillon. Ordinarily, these would be rubies, of which there are 51 in this watch. Deep red pools of shiny corundum that provide a near friction-free surface for the tourbillon to run on. Not here. Instead, we've got diamonds. And not just any old diamonds, but properly faceted and polished ones, just like you'd see in a jeweler's window. This watch really is a, um, a gem. How much this watch costs is not as simple as you might think it is, and is perhaps one of the most unusual things about it. Back in 2014, when it was brand new, it cost around £155,000, and from that, you would assume that its price today is fairly easy to determine. But here's where things get tricky, because the Langer 1 Torbjörn Handwerkskunst, due to its labour-intensive construction, is a limited edition. And I don't mean limited edition in the way Omega means it. Only 20 examples of this watch exist. Not 2,000, not 200, 20. If one goes missing, that's 5% of the population down. Given the rarity, complexity and handcrafted nature of the Handwerkskunst collection, that effectively makes this watch priceless. You won't find one for sale likely ever, and I can't imagine the people who currently have them would ever be in a position where they need to sell. I expect there would have to be an offer they couldn't refuse, and I dread to think what that might be. We've had to borrow this one from the Erlangen Zona archives, just to show you. When special becomes even more so, that's when you get into the realms of the Erlangenzona Handwerkskunst collection, and for the Langer 1 Tourbillon especially, that means discovering some pretty unusual features. Who knows what goes on in the minds of its creators when a watch like this comes to be? All I can say is that, whatever it is, I'm glad it did. Discover more exceptional watches at WatchFinder. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please do consider giving it a like and subscribing to the channel. If there are any watches you'd like to see featured, please let us know in the comments below.